He's making the tea. Craig is making tea. He's still making tea because it takes a few minutes to make a good cup of tea. Oh, yes. He's making tea. He's making tea. He's making tea. He's making tea. Ding dong. I rang the bell. Hello and welcome, everybody, to Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. This is episode 88. I'm Reza. And I'm Craig. How are you, Craig? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. And we hope all our listeners are well and ready to improve their English by growing their grammar, vocalizing their vocabulary, and perfecting their pronunciation. Well said, Reza. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, you're very welcome. Uh, It's an award-winning podcast. We were the winner of the 2015 UK Podcasters Best Education Podcast. Yes, I'm blowing my own trumpet. That means I'm saying something very uh, positive about myself, saying, aren't I good? Why not? What the hell? There you go. We reckon since we've been teaching for over 40 years, we're, we're allowed a little bit of self-praise from time to time. Don't you think, Craig? Absolutely. Self-praise, praise, P-R-A-I-S-E, is to say something good. Self-praise. To blow your own trumpet. Blowing your own trumpets. <laughs> In this episode, Craig, we'll be talking about the past continuous. That's right, and I hope you'll be helping me a little, Reza. But before we jump in to the present continuous, we have some feedback from Javier from Burgos. Javier wrote to us and said, Hi, this is Javier from Burgos. I'm a lecturer of environmental chemistry at the University of Burgos. I would like to congratulate you on your podcast. Well, thank you very much, Javier. Thank you. He says, I have found them very useful to improve my listening skills. I'm quite used to reading and writing in English due to my job mostly scientific papers written in an academic and formal style. Oh, you probably enjoyed our last episode on academic English. But my oral and listening skills are not at the same level. The other day, my eldest son got the PlayStation as a Christmas present. He was playing a game where the characters were speaking in American English. Have you ever used a PlayStation? Yes, not very often, but a few years ago. Yeah, I am, I've used one a couple of times. Then I'm not very good at the games. Me neither. To be honest, I'm not that enthusiastic about them. It's just as well, because they can be very addictive. Mm. He says, um, Javier continues, they talked so fast and probably used a lot of slang that I could hardly understand a thing. It was so frustrating. I know that your podcasts have an educational purpose and you make an effort to speak clearly and, more or less, slowly. I understand you reasonably well when you speak, but the event regarding my son's game left me shattered. And shattered is destrozado, destruido. Well, I guess that's all a matter of time. Spending time listening and listening and never giving up. Finally, I would like to tell you that your podcasts are good fun and you are funny too. I've seen your photos. Thank you. I've seen your photos on your podcast website and you have a face of good people. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I'm afraid I have not translated properly the Spanish sentence, tenéis cara de buenas personas, which I would say you look nice or you seem nice will perhaps be a better translation. But who is Reza and who is Craig in the picture? Who is the one wearing glasses? And who is the one holding a cup, cup of tea, I guess? Well, uh, Reza's the one wearing glasses and I'm the one drinking tea. Javier says, if only one of you were eating biscuits, I would know who it is. Sorry for (laughs) the joke. So who do you think... Is the biscuit eater, me or you? Mm, we both like a biscuit, don't we? We, do, we both like a biscuit. Yeah, like we, do. Biscuit, we do. Tea needs biscuit. 
So it could be either of us. Kind regards from Burgos. Well, what do you think, Reza, about the uh, problems with a PlayStation? That is quite frustrating, isn't it? You think you're making progress, you understand us, for example, or maybe you understand your English teacher in your your school or your uh, academy, and suddenly you listen to a film in original version or you play a game on the PlayStation and you don't understand anything. It's terrible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you offer any advice? Uh, just keep practicing your listening. As keep much playing as the possible. keep playing the game. <laughs> keep playing the game. Yeah, uh, practice your listening, and there's no better way that I can think of than listening to Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig, for example. Absolutely, but it's also important, I think, to listen to as many diverse and different sources, yeah. fuentes of English. As possible. So listen to BBC News, listen to CNN News, don't forget the Americans, listen to different accents, li listen to music, listen to films in original version, play games on the, every possible um, fuente or source of English, mix it up, change it, and with time your ears will be accustomed mm -hmm. to different people speaking. And Javier, since you're a lecturer... Uh, of environmental chemistry at the university. For you, you'll find plenty of interesting talks on your subject at TED Talks, which we mentioned, you recall, in the last episode, episode 87, when we were talking about academic English. TED Talks would be ideal for you. Absolutely. Listen to TED Talks because you also have people with varied accents on TED. So there are English speakers, um, Australians, Americans, all kinds of nationalities and accents. Now, Craig, before you mentioned uh, um, Javier, what were we talking about? Oh, that sounds like the use of the past continuous. Ah, indeed it is. What were we talking about? Well, I noticed that we haven't actually spoken about specifically the past continuous, sometimes called the past progressive tense in English. So let's, let's have a little look at the past continuous. When do we use the past continuous. Well, one use of the past continuous, which is fairly common, is when you're telling a story. When when you're beginning a story, you're kind of painting a picture of a situation. So you could say, for example, oh, this morning um, I went outside and I saw that the sun was shining, the birds were singing, people were driving to work, um, people were walking to school. It was a lovely day. So I'm painting a picture using the past continuous to give background to a story. That's one use of the past continuous. Can you think of another use, Reza? Yes, a uh, very important use of past continuous is to so talk about something which was happening at a particular moment or a particular point in time in the past often starting before that moment and continuing after it. For example, if I said to you, Craig, what were you doing at 10 o'clock this morning? At 10 o'clock this morning, I was working on the computer. I was writing some uh, posts for Facebook and Twitter. What were you doing this morning at 10 o'clock? I was having a shower. <laughs> A very long shower. Yes, <laughs> it was a long shower. So Reza's shower began before 10 o'clock. It did. It's, it began at about 9.50 <laughs> and it finished at about 10 past 10. It was a very long shower. It was a very long shower. Yeah. Um, he started before 10, 10 a.m. He continued at 10 a.m. and continued after 10 a.m. So this longer yeah. continuous action yeah. kind of um, came before and, and at and after 10 a.m. It was a 20-minute shower. The reason I had a 20-minute shower is probably connected to the fact that I may have drunk a bit too much beer last night, and uh, I felt that a long shower would, would help me wake up this morning. I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you, past continuous, uh -huh. 
I was going to ask you why you showered for so long, but I didn't want to get too personal on the podcast. And Craig, I noticed that you were busy when I arrived at your house today to come to record the podcast. What were you doing when I rang the bell? I was making tea. I was making tea when Reza rang the bell. So if you imagine, if you're talking about actions that happened in the past one after the other, when there's no connection, you just say, Reza rang the bell. He came in. I made tea. I took out the biscuits. Boom, 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 boom. Four separate actions not connected. He rang the bell. He came in. He made, I made tea. I took out the bis- the biscuits. Those are all past simple. Those are all past simple actions that are not connected. One happened after the other. However, if I was doing something and something happened in the middle, then I use the past continuous for the longer action and the past simple for the shorter one that interrupted the longer action. For That's, example. That sounds logical. So you use the past continuous for the action which continued. Continuous, continue. Or exactly. you also called it earlier the past progressive. You use the past progressive for the action which progressed. It took time to happen. Whereas you use the past simple for the quick action. Exactly. So the example was, I was making tea when Reza rang the bell. Hmm. So if you can imagine, Craig has started making the tea. He's making the tea. Craig is making tea. He's still making tea because it takes a few minutes to make a good cup of tea. Oh, yes. He's making tea. He's making tea. He's making tea. He's making tea. Ding dong. I rang the bell. Yeah. Oh, it's Reza. Oh, he answers the door and he continues making tea, making tea, making tea, making tea. It takes, so, it takes me a long time to make tea because Reza's very fussy about his tea. So I have to do it properly. It's Another, true. Another example of the past continuous can be when two things are happening for a long time in parallel to each other. For example, as I was making tea, Reza was telling me about his weekend. So two things happening continuously in the past at the same time. As I was making tea, Reza was telling me about his weekend. Can you think of another example of those two parallel actions in the past? Yes. While I was preparing the dinner, my girlfriend was watching TV. Both past continuous, both happening at the same time. And they both were actions which took quite a long time. They weren't instantaneous actions. They happened in parallel. They continued for a while. So they're both past continuous. So those are three main uses of the past continuous or past progressive. The first one, long action with an interrupted action in the middle. I was dreaming about a beautiful girl when suddenly my alarm clock rang. And stopped your dreaming. And stopped my dreaming. <laughs> um, two parallel actions happening for a long time in the past. So I was making tea and Reza was telling me a story. And when there's a specific time reference, like when a, a detective is asking questions, where were you at 11 o'clock yesterday morning? What were you doing when the postman came to the door? So when you get these questions in the past continuous about a specific time, In the past. One thing, Craig, which uh, causes problems for my students sometimes is that they mistakenly, they wrongly think that um, all long actions, all actions which took a long time must be past continuous. No, that is wrong. It can can be a short action. Wrong. But hold on, but a long action can be past simple is my point. Yes. Uh, For example, I lived in Salamanca for two years. It's true, before I came to Valencia. I lived in Salamanca for two years. Two years is a long time. I lived, past simple. It's not past continuous. It's past simple. I lived in Salamanca. Why? Because I'm talking about one action and only one action. But to live in Salamanca. But, I'm not comparing it to anything else. But compare it with this example. While I was living in Salamanca, I met 
my girlfriend. Exactly. When there's comparison, then one of the actions, if it's longer or the background action or situation, I was living in Salamanca. That's continuous. And the main or the action that's important, I met my girlfriend, that will be past simple. But if I just say I lived in Salamanca for two years, past simple. Before we continue with the past continuous, I'd like to talk about our sponsor, italki. Now, what is italki? Italki is a website on which you can improve your speaking and your English in general. You go there, you find a teacher, you sign up for a lesson, and you have conversations over Skype, and the teacher improves your English on a one-to-one personal, customized basis. Now, these lessons are very affordable. They're not expensive because there's no middleman. There's no language school in the middle taking a cut, taking, a, taking money from you. So it's a direct agreement between you and the teacher and you schedule the lessons at a time and on a day that's convenient for you. You learn at home, in the comfort of your home, and it's a very effective method, as Reza and I both know, because we've both tried it. We tested it so that we can confidently say that it's a very good service for you to try. If you would like to try italki, um, they're offering 100 free credits for listeners to inglespodcast.com, and you can get this special offer by going to inglespodcast.com slash italki. Just click on Start Speaking and find your native teacher. And Reza and I would like to thank Italki for sponsoring Aprender Inglés con Reza y Craig. Moving on with the past continuous, Reza, are there any other particular uses of the past continuous that we haven't mentioned? Anything specific? Yes, another use of past continuous is for repeated actions or actions which happen again and again. We'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go back first to what I said earlier. Craig was uh, preparing the tea when Reza rang the doorbell. Craig was preparing the tea. He would prepared the tea only once, right? But compare it to this. I was practicing Spanish every day, every day, eh, for at least an hour. Ah, this is a different use. Because if I say I was practicing Spanish every day, then the action repeated every day for at least an hour. So this time I'm using past continuous, but the situation is different. I'm saying that I repeated the action. That's another use of past continuous to show that an action repeats or happens again and again. Or perhaps in the answer to this question, why did your next door neighbor get divorced? Well... He was having an affair with his secretary. To have an affair is tener una aventura. So he was having an affair with his secretary. Past continuous because it's a repeated action happening again and again. Um, the word always is quite common with past continuous. For example, they were always eating in expensive restaurants. Uh, Monday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, three times a week, every week for months and months, they were always eating expensive restaurants. So they ate in expensive restaurants many times. So we use past continuous to show that it repeated or it happened many, many times. And the word always often goes with past continuous to show that the action happened a lot. Yeah, I remember that couple. They were very, very rich. They were always buying new clothes. They were always driving around in new cars. Yep. Also verbs which show change or growth, like to grow up or to improve. For example, I could say um, my two daughters were growing up quickly or my Spanish was improving when you show growth or change in something, you can use the past continuous. My hair, my hair was going grey, for example. It was changing, it was becoming grey. So how do you form the past continuous? What's the grammar of 
putting the past continuous together is? Well, I hope our listeners have figured it out by now. It's simply the past of the verb to be, so that's was or were, plus the ing form of the verb. I was editing a podcast when my mum rang. That's a very true example for me. Always, My mum always rings when I edit a podcast. I was editing a podcast yesterday when my mum rang in the, in the middle. So was is the past of the verb to be, and the verb to edit, editar, we take the ing form, editing, was editing. Here's another one. Yep, another example, but with were this time for the plural. Reza and I were having a beer when we saw a student walk past. So the formation of that is were because it's Reza and I, in other words, we. So we were plus having, have, ing, having. So Craig, uh, I've been asking questions. I've been asking questions is present perfect continuous. Well, that's for another day. Craig, to ask a question in the past continuous, how do we do that? Well, we had an example before with a detective, with a policeman, when I said, what were you doing at 11 o'clock yesterday morning? So were you doing? Where is the past of the verb to be? Mm -hmm. Then you is the subject. And then ing verb doing. So we change the order. So the affirmative is you were watching TV. You were. Just change the order. What were you doing? Okay. What was he doing? Where were you going? Or where were they going? Reverse the order of the subject and the verb to be. Yes. That's it. And for a negative. And for the negative, use not. N-O-T. So... I was not watching TV this morning. I was working. We were not drinking beer. We were recording a podcast. And when we use a past continuous negative in spoken English, we tend to use a contraction, don't we? That's right. So instead of saying, I was not, what would you say? I wasn't. Uh -huh. And what was your sentence? I wasn't watching TV. I was working on my computer. And the other one? We were not. We weren't. So we weren't drinking beer. We were having a conversation. Be careful with the pronunciation of weren't. It's one syllable, monosyllabic, weren't. Not two syllables, one syllable, weren't. The middle E is silent. Don't say guerant. No, say weren't. And the question form with what were is quite difficult because of the double w, w. So what were you doing? The pronunciation's not too, not too easy. What were you doing? What were you doing? It also becomes weak. Not what were you doing? What were, what were, what were you doing? What were you doing yesterday? Any other points on past continuous? Just one more little thing, because it's quite common, a special use of the past continuous for a certain verb, to wonder. I was wondering if you would like to come out to dinner tonight. I was wondering. I was wondering is past continuous, but actually is nothing to do with the past. It's a special use of past continuous. I was wondering means... I would like to know. I'm asking you a question. It's a very polite way of asking a question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I was wondering. I was wondering if you could lend me your camera this weekend. In other words, I'm asking you now, will you lend me your camera in a polite way? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now it's your turn to practice your English. We were wondering if you'd like us to... <laughs> if we were wondering if you would like to give us some personal examples using the past continuous, you can send us a voice message at speakpipe.com slash podcast, and you have about 90 seconds to give us some examples of past continuous sentences. I tell you what, can we can we ask a specific question? Why not for fun? Tell us what were you doing when you 
listening to this podcast? Good question. Were you sitting down comfortably? Were you driving? Were you at the gym? Were you making your dinner? Were you taking the dog for a walk? What were you doing? Tell us what you were doing and what who, action was in progress. And you who you were doing it with. Yes. If it's a bit too personal, don't go into great detail. Especially if you were in the shower. <laughs> Use discretion. You can send us an email if you prefer to me, Craig, at inglespodcast.com. Or to me, Reza, that's BelfastReza at gmail.com. And on next week's episode of the podcast, Reza and I will be speaking about politics and government. So until then, it's goodbye from Reza. And it's goodbye from Craig. Goodbye. The music in this podcast is by Pitts and the track is called See You Later. Oh, it's Reza. Oh, he answers the door and he continues making tea, 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 making tea.